What's going on, everyone? Today we've been dodging brooms. Currency has been exchanged, and we bring you the AFL round fourteen headlines. Mm, <sighs> Not much of a crack. This is a uh, antique can, if you will, um, <laughs> from the first edition release of a uh what's it called always room for pudding celebration ale from seven mile brewery inspired by uh comedic genius trio auntie donna people are saying um Uh. it's it's i think the first iteration of the beer that they brought out which was you know after the pudding thing got uh big so however long that was ago um, a, a number of now. years now. Uh, so it's been sitting for a while. Um, it is 3.3 standard drinks in here, or it was. <laughs> it's probably more by now. Um, so we'll see how we go sipping on that throughout the show. <laughs> Scarlet. No, thank you. <laughs> I will pour it, though. Um, <laughs> boys, what's going on? After you. Oh, that's thrown him off. <laughs> no, I was thrown to you. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's far more embarrassing. <laughs> uh, not much. Oh, fucking <laughs> typical. What did yeah. I expect? <laughs> <laughs> Matt's just built for a test match. He's just steady Eddie, comes in at six. He'll give you, you know... He'll give you 30 runs every time. <laughs> 30 I'll, runs I'll in a session. Block his way to 30 <laughs> yeah. runs in, in three days. <laughs> Have, having a bit of uh, anxiety or whatever you call it. Nah, this, this isn't helping my case. <laughs> <laughs> You're not young enough to have anxiety. <laughs> Wasn't around thought, when you were a kid. I've always been anxious. You tell the story of your childhood, and if uh, you know our reach in, say, North Macedonia was to increase, sure uh, someone <laughs> someone finds out and they go, "That that's not true." And you're like, "Oh, I, I don't know if it is either now. <laughs> like, it's it's a memory from like 20 years ago." Um, <laughs> but it, it's funny you say that because when I played cricket, uh, when I was you know under nines division in in Sunbury in Victoria. I um I did get the I got the legitimate best bowling award. However, asterisk at the end, I I feel there's a little bit of I was the best bowler by default in the sense that every eight year old kid watching you know Brett Lee Shane Warne wanted to be the next Shane Warne, and um I couldn't do it. I couldn't get my head around it. So I would just take two steps, keep my arm as straight as possible, double bounce right down the middle. <laughs> 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 and I happened to, yeah, I, it, I was the most consistent. <laughs> <laughs> if you bowl only pies, you are the most consistent bowler. <laughs> uh, just sent a little photo of Matt in a group chat um, from his cricketing days. Uh, ignore oh, the crown no. that's edited on there. <laughs> <laughs> I spied that in his house one day when I was rolling through. I was like, oh, oh here we go. Look at him grab that shaft. He's I holding think, it tight. Yeah. I, I think to be honest, it's actually better if you see the full photo because no one else is doing what I appear to be yeah, doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot funnier when you just see him in the middle. <laughs> I'll try and look for that while Keelan tells us about his week. Ah, oh, it's been like three days. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> um, what did I do? Painted some Warhammer. Uh, then Sean and I went for a run, uh, which destroyed me. And here I am, still destroyed. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I, 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 like, was Sean destroyed as well? Yeah, no, we were both fucked. Mm. You went a fair distance from what I saw. Mm. How far was it? 32. Oh, just quite 32 Ks. Yes, of course. 
Yeah, well, La- it's, lazy Sunday. Well, uh, it's like three weeks out from the marathon now, so that was that was peak week. That's the biggest week. It's all downhill us, from here. Take us down actual, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. How's the, the hun- uh, how's mm-hmm. the body feeling? Oh, fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I am so broken. I was sick to like the first we did. Uh, cause like, you know, finding 32 kilometers of road, sorry, path is not good, not easy. So, uh, and you know, we didn't want to just run the marathon course given that we're a month away. So I was like, why don't we just do 8k out and back twice? Um, and you do, you know, kind of slow on the way out and then marathon pace on the way back. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, no, the first one out. My, it was so cold, dude. Everything was cold and tight. And I was like, fucking sick. Because I'd been sick all week. So everything, like nothing had been used. I'd been sitting down all week, mm-hmm. lying down all week. So it was just horrible, horrible time. I sounded worse than I do now. I had more phlegm everywhere. It was just not, nothing was coming together. It was a mental exercise completing the whole thing, if I'm completely honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my uh, Gallipoli. But if, here, here I am. If, I woke if up this morning, opened woke... the plan, and the plan said 80-minute recovery run. And I said, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a 30-minute recovery run this evening. And my legs are feeling a lot better after that, to be fair. But I just need my everything to be less congested. Yeah, Maybe fair enough. Day. If someone had said to me, like, <clears throat> midday on Saturday hey, tomorrow morning you have to get up and run 30Ks. I, I would have just spent the afternoon saying my goodbyes. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that. <laughs> Instead, as all good runners do, I spent Saturday hunched over a desk painting Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have read that that's in the, in the marathon training plans. Keep a key, big fan. Key component. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, what's going on with you? Uh, what's been uh, going on? Uh, well, since we last met, what it's been literally just the weekend. Yeah, um, spent all day mowing and moving long cut grass so it wouldn't kill the rest of the grass. So my back is absolutely cooked. Um, Sunday, when visited the grandparents, helped them help them out with a few chores and stuff like that. Which is pretty good. Uh, and went and. <laughs> Um, got some uh, crocaded iron roofing off my auntie and uncle yeah. that they had laying oh. around. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and such. Uh, I'm putting Shed? a yeah a cover on an uncovered bit of bird aviary thing, whatever it was called, where there was pigeons previously. Um, putting a cover on it so I can park the mower under there, so it's out of the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. You putting a cover over the cricket pitch or? Oh. I will have to buy a very large tarp at some point <laughs> and a roller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a very long rope to put around the boundary. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd actually be sick. So or I can good. just go stand out there in the paddock with my pants down. Get, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll head it towards the short boundary then. Um, uh, yeah, can you please have that ready for the housewarming? That'd be excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a few months away, and I have a list of things I'd like to get done before then. But we'll see. We'll see how that list goes. Plenty of weekends for you. You'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a triggering word. It's for him. It's been raining quite quite a bit. It literally. I. Uh, what did I? I had to sort out a couple of things Saturday morning before I started mowing, and as I got on the mower and drove it out from like our carport, it started pouring with rain. I was like, are you fucking joking me? <laughs> but then I just persisted. I was like, whatever. Just continued through it. I was like, it'll blow over. Five minutes yeah, later, it was all right. right. Yeah. Only rained on me a couple times as I was going, but the grass will just, recover. Do you sink beers as you ride around? <laughs> um, Surely. Once, it, once it's past midday, yeah. <laughs> oh, good, good cover, dude. I usually go like, if if it's still you know early enough and I still have coffee left, I'll take my coffee with me. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. Around. But then, yeah, past midday, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. There's a cup holder for a reason. Is there a cup holder? That's sick. Yeah. So I can have a spare one while I hold the other one in my left hand. <laughs> yeah, you, don't need, you don't need two hands to drive a mower. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, uh, Matt, do you have a minute? I could, I could ramble on about something. You can last a minute. Oh, it's a whole minute, <laughs> end to end. <laughs> <laughs> so a minute I... works. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, sure, yeah. All right. You're uh-huh. saying that like it's not like regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> it's been yeah. every week for numerous weeks at this point. <laughs> An incalculable amount of weeks. No, all right. I've been thinking, you know, the uh, the the hard, good old Aussie battlers that you'll find in your local pub in the pokies room. They're uh, they're truly the most heroic Australians amongst us, I think. And I don't think they get the recognition they deserve because they're out there every day, you know. Like, people like going to the pub. People like drinking a beer in this country. And do you think people are prepared to pay $25 for a pint? No. $10, $12 maybe, maybe 15 on the coast. And uh, and the reason those prices are so affordable is because of those brave heroes in that room, <laughs> pulling pulling those mission levers, pushing those buttons all day every day. And uh, yeah, I don't know, but it's kind of interesting when you think about it because, especially in those regional towns, like with a Aboriginal sounding name, that um that pub is like the heart of the town. You know, it's usually it's the cultural hotspot. It's where everything goes. It's where everything happens. Usually that pub funds all the local footy teams. It, it's massively important to the town, but it's but it's all funded on blood money. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, I think people look down on them too much for the, for the service they're providing. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> I salute them. <laughs> Get him a medal. <laughs> the most, uh, yeah, the most courageous and honourable Australians can be found in RSLs nationwide, <laughs> in the dingiest pokey rooms because all the Gallipoli heroes have died already. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of them were ex-veterans, to be honest. Ex- oh yeah, well, absolutely. Not from Gallipoli though, probably. Not, not I think <laughs> time time frame wise, that's a that's a bit of a stretch. Mm-hmm. Also, we talk in uh, regional in uh, uh, indigenous sounding towns such as Texas, QLD <laughs> four three eight five, Applethorpe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's called Stanthorpe, you idiot. There's two of them. Fuck off there is, because Stanthorpe's known for its apples, so that's wild that there's Stanthorpe and Applethorpe. <laughs> Stanthorpe decided to cuck Applethorpe. <laughs> oh, it exists. Yeah. I, it's I, also I, in the granite belt. Yeah, yeah. I, I think <clears> it wild. was um, actually one of oh. those towns that had a German name, and then uh, after a certain yeah. war, it was uh, no boy, yeah. no. I'm already on the tr- I'm already on the translator. Applethorpe was 100 percent the German settlers, <laughs> just not letting anyone else in for a. Oh, it's totally where that massive apple farm is on the way to Stanthorpe. That kind of lines up pretty, makes pretty sense. well. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> the apples are shipped from Applethorpe to Stanthorpe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stan thought so they do the interesting shit with it. That's when they turn it into cider and such. Yeah, and the stands are shipped from Stanthorpe to Applethorpe. You wouldn't believe what's <laughs> not found in Diamond Vale. Vales? Moving on. <laughs> Dude, do you reckon do you reckon they turned up at Thorndale and it was just full of fucking lantana? <laughs> Dude, the whole region is is given back just to, just to comedy. Cotton Vale, what do you reckon they grow there? Mangoes, probably. Shut up. Is that next to Wheat Town? <laughs> Sugarloaf. 
We'll have to cap oh, it this way. Man, how good. Yeah, all right. What's near Cottonvale? Uh, the Queensland New South Wales border. Oh, it's and, near uh, Apple and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? If it's on the Queensland New South Wales border, they might have one of those cool railway museums that um, shows all the kids that there used to be two different gauges of track. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah, this is where they had to go to get all you know because the train from New South Wales actually couldn't go on the Queensland tracks because um yeah just physically couldn't fit. Is is that why we don't have high speed rail yet? Yeah, yeah. Is that still we, the case? <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's still the case, but it's but look, we're very antiquated on rail. That being said, the only way to make high speed rail make sense would be literally to have it like you know stop at melbourne stop at sydney stop at brisbane and nothing yeah. in between because you you're losing your time savings if you make more stops than that well i i don't want to stop anywhere in between i mean you, to be fair actually you could probably you could throw in like a coffs harbor or something couldn't you yeah 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 probably i don't I don't know why you would I'm not sure many people yeah. get on Big off, banana. But... <laughs> Have it zoom in past a big banana and then go oh, through the middle of Ballina and go past a big prawn. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Send it all the way to the big pineapple. <laughs> the Bowen? Big pineapple? Um, I feel like Bowen's got to be the big mango, right? Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Has to be. Uh, big pineapple is oh, big pineapple is on the sunny, sunny coast. <laughs> silly, silly old me. Makes sense. Fucking toss it in near Aussie world. <laughs> Surely that place isn't still running, right? No, it is. It's so fucking busy. It's always busy every time I have to drive past. How? I've driven past there handfuls of times recently. What do you mean, how? It's the biggest pub in Australia or some shit. <laughs> right. It's fucking massive, dude. <laughs> hmm, I see. Fair enough. Ow, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, what have you been searching? Oh, this is more important. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> In Googling... The- stop, stop, <laughs> what you, stop what you're doing. <laughs> stop. In what Googling I- the big pineapple, I've actually got breaking news. Okay. 14 hours ago, the big pineapple reopened. Where are we? Um, was it previously ha- not open? Close for renovation. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> was well, it breaking news. The big pineapple was not open. <laughs> Is it not open on Sundays? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not uh, reading this article. We're just going to go with that. Okay. Excellent. That, that's the best way to do um, news. Journalism. Just, just take yeah. the headlines. Yeah. Um, yeah, Matt, what were you searching over there? Yeah, just German translating town names. <laughs> <laughs> Applethorpe is Apfeldorn. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yep. Is that how you pronounce it? No, I think it was like... Uh, there were a lot of silent letters. I butchered it. I, I, <laughs> I pressed the little speaker and I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, there was absolutely like... Uh, 100% uptake in the use of the word g'day as soon as they change the name from the German name to a <laughs> English-based one. Yeah, and Heil went down 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Weird G- that. Guten Morgen out, g'day in. <laughs> uh. Group Duolingo lessons. For the whole town. All right. Yeah, good um, one, dude. That'd be so many owls. You need <laughs> too many owls. Uh, any nominations for this week's unofficially sponsored insert book here, Bush of the Week? Not from me. Thank you. I would, I'll nominate myself. It, I was in the northern suburbs of Brisbane or north of Brisbane, I suppose. And it took me an hour and 25 minutes to get home. Uh, I'd realized my blunder that I had chosen to avoid toll roads when I'm 
pulling up to Hamilton. I'm going, wait a minute. Uh oh. <laughs> mm. There's no way this is the quickest way. <laughs> Driving along the Brisbane River. <laughs> but it was delightful, though. It was. It, it, low traffic, probably the best city drive I could have had. It's quite nice along there now, actually. Now that it finished a lot of the roadworks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All jokes aside, yes. Actually, not too bad. But um, completely avoiding the purpose-built <laughs> tunnel that would take you straight out to Ipswich under the city. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, an hour, 25 minutes, that's how long it took. I left at 2, 2.05, got home at like 4. Um, the map doesn't 30, line up. Instead of 35 minutes. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, but that that's... would have cost you like 10 bucks. And how much is your time worth? Time is money. That's... That's the thing. That that was the thing that was grading me as I realized, as I pull into Hamilton, I'm like, whatever that $7 was, I've, I've lost <laughs> in, in fuel and then some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sitting there like a, revving at every red light. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a weary traveler on the dusty trail. Hmm. It would have been brutal back, like, I don't know, just having to get anywhere before highways, motorways. But, like, not, not back in horse and carriage time. Uh, like mo- like Model T Ford days or a bit bit more recent? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Remember when they had to wind cars up to start them? <laughs> That would have been yeah, wild. They were sharing the road with horses at that time, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure um, dad told me about his dad one time winding the car up. Um, and uh, my dad's, what, 65 now. So, par on that side. Pretty old. Um, bro- got a broken arm one time from a uh, backfire <laughs> while he's trying to wind up the car to get it started. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So probably probably a good thing we don't have to do that anymore. You're like in middle of winter, running late for work, it's fucking freezing out, car <laughs> backfires, broken arm, no Medicare, still have to go to work. <laughs> it's funny you should say that because I'm picturing, I'm picturing the guys that bought the first car ever made and it had a max speed of five kilometers. <laughs> Everyone's blitzing past them on horses. <laughs> They're walking past uh, them and they have to go slow in their car because the horse is so slow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, my family was one of the first or like I swear, swear to God, like when Wi-Fi came out, we just the timing, like my dad doesn't get new things, but it just timed out that way. And uh, it's like, oh, neat. We've got the, you know, got a new upgrade or something. You had this big modem. It was it was like a two by two meter box at the time. <laughs> Had a range of one meter. <laughs> this is what the North Macedonians are going to call you out for lying, fal- false stories. <laughs> like, even in North Macedonia, it wasn't that bad. He's <laughs> like, where'd this guy live? NASA in the 60s? <laughs> <laughs> I think Romania does have better internet than us. Oh, absolutely. Well, they're in Europe, dude. So, yeah. Of course they do. I, th- this... I, I think out of the hundreds of countries, we're like bottom five for internet coverage. Crazy. It was a it was a Christmas miracle that I got MBN like five weeks before COVID lockdown hit. If I didn't have MBN internet there, I, it would have been over. I would have been toast. <laughs> what am I going to do? Read? <laughs> well, your reading's really good. <laughs> Grow up, Matthew. I don't think I will. Yeah, fair enough. Well, <laughs> made it this far. Oh. <laughs> Wizard. Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're we um we are just behind the Bahamas. 
Hell yeah, dude. For uh, average broadband speed. Damn. But we are above Uzbekistan. Oh, uh, let's oh, go. 0.2 suck it, megabits. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. Sucks well, India suck has better internet than us. Nepal's got better internet. Ivory Coast. <sighs> that one <The> hurts. <laughs> <laughs> How many people Palestine's live in Nepal? Got better internet than us. Like two dozen. How do they have better internet than us? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> At least seven hundred people live in Nepal. <laughs> There's no Mongolia. One there, I guess. Still a place, <laughs> allegedly. Montenegro, that that's got a population of about fifteen, I don't know, 600, 626,000, But still, it's easy for a place like that. They just have one really good internet cafe. Still, <laughs> uh, I'm putting San Marino under the same thing. They have a population of thirty three thousand. That can't be a country. Vatican City's a country. It's got city in its yeah, name. but that's just to hide all the wealth. Mm. From the church back in the day for after the Crusades and such. But they are the church. When they when they pillaged everything. It was used for the Holy Roman Empire to hide everything in. Oh, what about what do you reckon the population of oh no, never mind, it's more than that. Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. Where well, they're playing some of the Cricket World Cup games at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, 103,000. So I thought it was going to be small, but... Yeah, well. Very disappointing. Never mind. We can move on. I'm getting into Are all the real better countries here. Oh, yeah. No, I'm only scrolling up from Australia. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Jordan has better internet than us. <laughs> and that's a person. That's just one dude. <laughs> Probably lives in, like, Brisbane CBD. You guys played Age of Empires 3 um, campaign. No. I don't think so. Ah, well, this joke's going to go over your heads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the fictional the fictional country of Malta from the Age of Empires three campaign has a better average internet speed than Australia. It's not fictional. It's a real place. I was uh, about to say. I, I don't think I, I used fictional. to think it was, where my dog I used from. to. Uh, yeah, Maltese, isn't he? Yeah. But yeah, no, I used to think it was. Um, I used to think it was fictional. Oh, fair enough. The campaign's got the Holy Grail and shit in it, dude. I was like, yeah, no, all this is made up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Holy Grail's true. Shut Hundreds up. of collectors saying about it. <laughs> <laughs> Strange dream, actually. <laughs> Pretty big yeah, army. Uh, in, in the Aladdin, world's ever seen. In the Aladdin universe, no one seems to be bothered by magic. And I, I don't know if it's a world with magic, but it was never like explicitly stated it was. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of troubling. Uh, the viewers missed the part where you said earlier that you, a grown ass man, yeah, thought it was a okay idea to get up and watch the Aladdin live action. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, okay. He comes across the magic carpet as he does, and he goes, "Oh wow!" He wait. does what on the magic carpet? A magic carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, a magic carpet! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, like, imagine if Isaac got up and like created like a trans-dimensional portal and and walked through it, and then like handed you a beer, and you're just like, "Oh, thanks." Th- that'd be a weird reaction to have. <laughs> Why is no, you said science he, working he, on you that? You said he came across it. <laughs> I was making a... Yeah, I chose to ignore <laughs> you. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were confused. Yeah, it's reasonable. No, yeah. <laughs> the, the, movie, the movie's just going and everything's like very not magic. And then he finds a magic carpet. Uh, because he stumbles and falls backwards and it catches him and then like flies him around <laughs> and he just his first initial reaction is oh cool a magic carpet <laughs> like, whoa <laughs> like they're around everywhere <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're pretty popular these days um so you could have gone and seen like furiosa yeah i probably should have that would have been cool actually 
I didn't think about it, and now I'm bummed out. <laughs> Good. Hopefully, you never make this mistake again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's likely. <laughs> Uh, back to the segment. Kill on any books of the week? No, he's, you said no. Yeah, he okay. said no. Come oh, on, right, right. fucking. Uh, dude, I've got get one. a memory. Um, yeah, goal, right, moving on. Panthers goalie, uh, Bob, um, Sergei Bob, Bob, uh, Bobrovsky, um, <laughs> gave up five goals in uh, 25 minutes of game four of the Stanley Cup finals and oh, got, no. got yanked. <laughs> The, the, like hope. vaudeville cane, they just—it's <laughs> <laughs> a real long pull. <laughs> got, got, got pulled by the coach. And oh, backup, backup went in and let in three more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they brought the e bug on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but oh. yeah, don't skip ahead. Um, you know, w- was doing very well. Not a, not a great game, but only one game, I guess. Better than having a bad series. I can't believe his his entire last name is Bob Ross in Russian. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, I've got nothing for this shit list. Nah, me either. All right, no movements. Moving on. Oh, fuck. Where's my headlines? Um, Keelan, hit the... Hit the thing while I go get my headlines. <laughs> Hold off the press. <laughs> uh, Matt, quick, say something funny. Um, orphans don't have any parents. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I told Matt to say something funny. And he said orphans don't have any parents. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it, there was timing and delivery. It was so good. It was let, legitimately good. Let the record state there was timing and context. Well, our orphan fans are not going to be very happy with you. <laughs> I don't think they're very happy in general, to be fair. They've got no parents. <laughs> they tune in to forget about the troubles in their life. Here we are, throwing it back in the face. And now you've just reminded the Irish listeners of the troubles. Good work, idiot. (laughs) That's got to be a tough race, being Irish. Just achieved and accomplished nothing. Angry all the time. (laughs) Uh, Guinness. (laughs) Neutral in world wars. (laughs) (laughs) They do seem to be pretty good at fighting. It's a... Of all the people you could go after. <laughs> Are you just referencing Conor McGregor? It's like making fun of the Congo. <laughs> it's like, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I heard what well, you said. Well, they're a democratic republic, so they'll probably oh. vote on it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I pressed the button already. Uh, who wants to take it away? All right, first up we had uh, Brisbane Lions, 19-12-126, defeated St. Kilda, 16-10-106 at the Gabatoir. <clears throat> uh, mine's shit, so I can go first if you'd like. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, defensive Dynamos, St. Kilda, get walloped for 126, forgetting that the best defense is a good offense. Not bad. Yeah, nice. <laughs> defensive Dynamos. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the Saints' lack of faith had Higgins hanging his head in shame despite kicking five goals and Joe really put the Danner hurt on the Melbourne club. <laughs> He's going back to the old faithful. That's good every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a well you can continually drink from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a spring. <laughs> yeah. It's always there. <laughs> it's Mount Franklin itself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saints defensive tactics ripped to shreds as Lion Saint killed him at the Gabatoire. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Gabatoire back in action. Oh, yeah. Perhaps. Absolutely. 
All right, Marvel Stadium, we had the Western Bulldogs 23-11-149, a cricket score, if you will, uh, defeated the Dockers 12-10-82. Sorry, uh, I'm just taking my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> like a supple, precious three-year-old child, Fremantle were just too irresistible for the hungry Western Bulldogs. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are you insinuating? They 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 got they got mauled. They got killed. Oh, okay, cool. No, yeah. I, thought, I thought you were getting real dodgy. All good then. Um, after seeing the D's get walloped by the WA side, the Western Bulldogs avenge their older Melbourne brother by mauling the Dockers by sixty-seven points. Ah, hmm. nice. Fair enough. Uh, West leads Sons of West in win over Water Boys from way out west. <laughs> <laughs> Riley West had four goals straight. Um, that I, I had a different one originally, but I decided against it. Uh, it was very simple. It was uh, it's a dog eat dock world. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good though. <laughs> That one belongs on the back page. Yeah, fact. <laughs> Massive font. It's half the page in that. Oh, one little man. photo and like two paragraphs maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Richmond, 6-13-49, lost to Hawthorne, 14-13-97. Uh, I found this one really tough because I um, really wanted to rip on the wizard for banging 27 behinds um, but couldn't bring myself to do it. Mm -hmm. So I've got a very simple brown and gold beats yellow and black. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, Thank Christ for white shorts. (laughs) (laughs) That that sounded like the subject line of the Hawks fan club email that would be sent out after the game. Oh, it was. I ripped it, yeah. Uh, uh, I've got. Oh, you. Oh, 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 yeah. I'll go. No, you after, go. Do you, after you. Uh, dream start for Dusty in his 300th turns into a daunting reminder of dire situation at Tigerland. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Yeah. That was believable. Like, <laughs> just fresh off the article. <laughs> Uh, the Richmond Tiger looked like that starving polar bear from the ice cap panics roaming around all skin and bones and such as the hawk circled around pecking at it, stealing one of its eyeballs. Ew. Pretty grim. <laughs> <Brutal>. <laughs> uh, I it's remember one of, those, one of those Chinese zoos <laughs> that you see. Like a concrete box. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the polar bear in its natural habitat. <laughs> oh, the tiger. Oh, it's dying in there. <laughs> Come look at our very, very healthy pandas that certainly aren't just men in suits. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take a message I got in the... Uh... Uh, from my cousin as a as a unsolicited submission. Yep. For headline for this game, go for it. The buy might be Hawthorne's toughest contest on the run home. <laughs> Hawks fans up and about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Jacob, for that um, that wise wise submission. Very good. It's definitely confident. Uh, so, some are saying second best team in the competition, which... Uh, I've heard one say that. <laughs> People are saying. <laughs> person has said that. Uh, okay, next up at the Adelaide Oval, uh, Adelaide Crows 10-7, 67, Sydney Swans 16-13-109. I, um, I was going to do an Amadi thing but I figured someone else probably did. So I fucked just, up. Just everyone. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I fucked up and uh, and gave this piss poor effort. Uh, Sydney Swans demonstrate the ultimate reverse sweep 
um, keep Dallas Mavericks finals hopes alive. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You could have like, I feel like you could have played off like reverse sweep Adelaide Oval big final session or something Mm. like that. Mm. But, you know, you can... He's playing bank, Maxwell or something. Yeah, bank that for later. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, in the imaginary football league, the Adelaide Crows ten seven sixty seven beat Joel Amadi nine one fifty five. Over to the AFL, and the whole Swans team uh, murdered the Crows by seven goals. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ah, oh, man, mine's not good. I thought when Keelan just, said his just was bad, say it. it, it Don't would be say worse. it's not good. It could be. It could be so bad it's funny. Do you ever go up on stage at your stand-up thing and say, "Hey, not very good. These are no, not. God, no. These no, are not good jokes." Cringy. People do it though. <laughs> I won't name names, but <laughs> not me. No. Okay. Um, and let's hear your really good headline. I don't know why I wrote it. I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, send I, it I can, I'll fill air and you can come up with something else. No, no, no. It's there. A M A R T E Y. Seven letters. Add two equals nine. Nine goals scored from Joel. What does it all mean? It does. <laughs> I <laughs> wish there was more. <clears throat> if. If we could let you take it back, I would. (laughs) I think, you know, no one ever wants it. Of of course, it's not a title that you hold proudly, but eventually someone had to have the worst draft of all time, and (laughs) there it is. So now we've got a benchmark Uh, established. (laughs) You made me cough too much. It sounds like dot points for the title I should have wrote. <laughs> that was on the whiteboard in the middle of the like thought bubble. Just waiting yep. for some, you know, a bit of fleshing out around the outside. Um, pretty commentators weren't happy with Amadi being taken off in the middle of the quarter for like three minutes. And then there was still like two minutes to go and he got taken off again. At you know nine one, um, but pretty efficient. Given given he had uh, ten disposals, all ten were kicks, and he scored nine one. <laughs> pretty good. I mean, Chol was on for that, and then he had one disposal like like through the third that was a handball. Yeah, yeah. I was like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, ruined it. Chol was good, and Amani was like, huh, I could I could probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> Proper old school full forward just parked up in front of the goals, does nothing else. Yeah, who would have thought Chol would be that guy this year too, <laughs> by the way? None of us. Hey, wait a minute. We we had faith in Chol. He he did well in Had faith. I no had ben faith. I didn't think he'd I didn't think he'd be the I didn't think he'd be the guy. I also didn't yeah, think Mitchell no. Lewis was going to be out for fucking ages. That no, t- that that probably doesn't. That that's the real kicker. Chol was the only tall person in Hawthorne's fifty all game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, the wizard isn't going to take a pack mark. He, he did. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will do everything except kick the goal. At this point, <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's all. The, that's all for the Sydney game then. Yep. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh, Marvel Stadium. Uh, I think. Did we predict this one as the high-scoring Marvel game? We you did. did for the week. You did. Yeah. Yeah. You both, said that not, not, both of them were actually. So, but either way, um, cash that. Uh, North Melbourne, nineteen four. What a performance! <laughs> one hundred and eighteen. Collingwood, eighteen eleven. One hundred and nineteen. Ooh. 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 Uh, I don't know what's funnier, the Roos losing by one or the Pies getting back on their late victory script. 
<laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> uh, rope and stool sales sold out <laughs> along Arden Street. Uh, elsewhere in Melbourne, uh, black and white rope and stools returned um, at an all-time high, most citing the reason <laughs> as change of mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's accurate. That's not bad, but I definitely have a different take on it. Uh, oh. My title's pretty simple. The Ruse could have won, but they didn't. No one's surprised. <laughs> um, but Isaac did just remind me... Um, I've just got to open up Instagram. Uh, my friend who is a Pi supporter sent back or just sent a message. I'm sure you need therapy after that game, as of all, as do all North Melbourne fans. I, I replied, no, no, no. We had nothing to lose and everything to gain. The headlines will read, great team struggles to beat mentally handicapped, weak and feeble club. <laughs> barely won two. Amazing. Pies can barely beat the worst team in the comp. <laughs> <laughs> what it's a like, spin. How good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is a half, half, glass half full sort of guy. <laughs> That's some you, Murdoch shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think, I don't know. It's like it's like trying to go into a fight against, you know, the punching down. You go into a fight against someone clearly weaker than you. If if you beat them, horrendous. If you lose to them, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lose-lose situation. <laughs> um, uh, it's Mike Tyson fighting the, the brother. What's his name? Jake Paul. Uh, Jake Paul, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's that fight for Mike Tyson, lose lose. Yeah, it really is. Hopefully, it, like most boxing, it probably won't amount to anything. After they <laughs> they just make millions, no, nah, they just make millions of dollars promoting, and then mm. the fight mysteriously gets cancelled somehow. Mm. Weird that. <laughs> or, or or it's like the um the uh George Foreman. Wasn't it like George Foreman? Not oh, the grill. Tyson. <laughs> Didn't they have a match like a couple years ago and it ended in a draw? <laughs> What's the point of the judges? I thought if no one gets clean knocked out, there's meant to be meant to be a bunch of wankers that go, yeah, he punched better. Yeah, and they adjudicated it as a as a draw. <laughs> Weak. <laughs> Um, I'm Matt. I'm surprised you didn't respond to your friend saying, "Yeah, the therapy would be uh, eight years too late, though." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like, hey, this guy, you know, the the bottom of the barrel that's been thrown down the well. You you might need some therapy after this one. And it's like, nah, buddy. <laughs> A little bit of water came in and we floated slightly, but we're still down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting every urge to do a Bane <laughs> Quick find a cup. Do it. Sorry? Quick find a cup. <laughs> yeah. Just cup your hands over the microphone quick. <laughs> no, it's just, it, it feels hacky now because everyone's done it. You know. In, it might so, be long yeah, that, enough since the movie came out that you can do it again. That Bane guy did it. Can't do it again. <laughs> I think Isaac said it way better than than the you know you merely adopted the darkness. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> that's wasn't what great. he sounds like, doesn't he? No, nah. he's, he's all not British. from where I'm sitting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh. let's let's move on from this game. Isaac like, had fourteen standard drinks already. <laughs> I'm getting, getting through it. It's uh it's actually quite a nice beverage. It. it it tastes just like uh, uh, Christmas pud. Pud, yeah, nice. Um, good, good for this time of year. Obviously, not Christmas time, but um, you know, it's 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 porter and stout season. All right, <laughs> I'm sure the North Macedonian listeners will understand that the Southern Hemisphere does have different seasons. Yeah, surely. Um, yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if they <clears throat> only had pilsners there though. <laughs> Seems like one of those sort of countries. I reckon they'd have a few regular lagers as well. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, moving on from uh, Matt Soros. Um, Thank you. 
moving on from the regular programming of Matt's Furrows. Um, oh. uh, NG Stadium, uh, GWS Giants, 9 nineteen seventy three. Port Adelaide, 6 15 51. Must have been real windy in Western Sydney mm-hmm. on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Was that your headline? <clears throat> That's my headline, sorry. Or you can have wind winds. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pick. Much better. Yeah, okay. Uh, Elon Musk fans crying as range continues to be an issue with power running out. GWS proved to have a little bit more energy in the tank. <laughs> Real knee slap on that one. The fucking look you gave as you said NG2, cunt. Honestly, I think you're a comedian, do you? Man, funny guy over here. <clears throat> um, Giants grab gross win in god awful goal kicking gala. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Nine nineteen. Nine nineteen to six fifteen. Footy losers, boys. Yeah. That's no, horrendous. I think it did. In a oh. huge, tightly fought last quarter, um the Giants kicked two five to the powers one five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I googled nine nine one nine, thinking it might be some country's emergency number. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, turns out uh, there's some. Is it a gang? There's some. There, no, no. There's just some hella cringe. Some uh, angel number nine one nine. The hell's uh, an angel number? Have, well, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, have you been noticing the number nine one nine appearing everywhere you look? No. <laughs> Neither. Um, they are messages from the universe, specifically in the form of an angel number. Angel number 919 holds powerful symbolism and represents the dawning of new beginnings in your life. So the giant says a comprehensive. <clears throat> well, uh, you could think that if you so wish. If you also happen to look at the clock at 19 past nine this morning and then you're like, oh, I've seen that number twice today. You, you could, you'd be correct. It, it, you'd, be, <laughs> you'd be accurate. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's um, probably as bad as accurate as a horoscope and such. I would expect. Mm. So it's yeah. not not badge number of an angel. It's no, just, that would be much cooler. It's just the yeah, uh, hello, uh, it's just Michael. The number Michael version of Heaven, heaven PD, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vice. Yeah, no, nah, badge number 919, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's Archangel to you, actually. <laughs> Pretty sick guy, actually. Old Mike. Is he? Yeah. He threw hands. Well, yeah, they all did, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, all right, quick uh, shoeing of the week recap. Um, no brooms around here, but um, we're pretty fucking good, boys. Uh, Matt had Sydney, who won by 42. Uh, Killen had the Hawks, who won by 48. And I think had the Lions, who won by 20. Um, pay attention. Um, it's it's that easy. We're giving them out every week. Sort of. Um, Matt, well, still, yeah. in, still in the lead with 11 now. Uh, Killen, 10. I'm a 9. Um, <clears throat> Killen, you had a very nice percentage boosting win. Oh, as did mm. Matt as well. Um, nipping it, nipping at your heels still. I'll get there. I'll take him. I'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we do tips for this week? Last of the buy rounds. So. Only got twenty minutes before Matt has to go to bed. So, better uh, rip through. <clears throat> Let's get it. Uh, no more Thursday night footy games, of course. Uh, so Friday we've got Carlton versus Geelong. Hmm. Uh, Matt probably doesn't even have the website open yet. To be fair, <laughs> no, I do. Um, oh, I'm tipping. Okay. I'm tipping the lids. Given given it's at the MCG, there is no lid on that stadium, uh, so that'll give you an indication of which way to pick. It'll be Carlton. It is indeed off. Yeah. Yeah. 
I will also be taking the Blues. <laughs> You're right, man. By 11 points. Oh, I've got 12. I got 24. Oh. Ooh. Oh, well, my margin, my margin allowed me to overtake you in the tips last week. Actually, I know. So. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. a swing. I dropped like three places on margin. <sighs> yeah, because I, I gained three. Because the people like, aren't tipping. Uh, okay, uh, Adelaide Oval, Port Brisbane Lions. Uh, depends. Is it oh, windy? Man, <laughs> how windy is it? <laughs> um, Airport kicked two two last game. So he's trending back down after his whatever the fuck it was. Five yeah, goals. might be. Mm. Um, hmm. I've got to take Brisbane. I can't take the power here. Really? Yeah. They were shit last week. I'm going Brisbane. The power was so bad. Ah, oh, it's Adelaide Oval, though. I know. <clears throat> and oh, I've got Brisbane. I've got Port. I've gone Port. Yeah, I have. Uh, I've got to take Port. I don't love it, though. But... Port, Port on a two game losing streak, Brisbane on a two game winning streak. Um, I'm I'm picking the Lions to tear them apart at home. You think they never would, <laughs> but. Ha <laughs> Nice, dude. <laughs> I thought that was a bit in excess. <laughs> a bit much? <laughs> yeah, a bit much. Moving on. Um, it's listed as a giant stadium, but we all know it as uh, NG Stadium. Um, yeah, it's, of course. It's uh, the capitalism, the skirmish of Sydney. Um, what? I don't like it. That's what they're calling it. I don't care what they're calling People it. People are saying. No, I don't fucking. People care. being me, others oh. may call it. Uh, you know, the Battle of the Bridge, etc. No, it's um, worse because they're both on the same side of the bridge. Yeah, then, you know, not that far apart. The... <sighs> no, nah, I'm all out of ideas. Pretty good. Um... <laughs> oh, I've just, knocked some... I've just knocked something over. It was that shit. <laughs> uh, mm. The Clash of the Colony. Um, giants versus oh. Swans. I'm going, going the Swans. Oh, I've got the Swans too, given that they're the best team in the comp. Yeah. This would be the one they lose, though, for some reason. I don't know. They almost choked last week. The Sydney struggle? Ooh. <laughs> the Sydney scrimmage. There you go. <laughs> the Sydney swedge. Swedge is a synonym of, uh, of fight, and it's Scottish, allegedly. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Or you have the Sydney scrap. I don't hate that. I like it better than skirmish. Same. I'm taking the Sydney scrap. Sorry, I'm taking Sydney in the Sydney scrap. Yeah. Man, we gotta, we gotta. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna take Sydney too. But we gotta figure something good out for this one. It's this has been like our. Moby Dick, <laughs> for, for, since like the start of the pod. For what the sit the Sydney Derby? All oh, right, yeah, I've thrown many names on it <coughs> in previous previous seasons. Um, yeah, we're just waiting for a good one. Yeah, waiting for one to really hit. <laughs> yeah, one will catch on. It will. Uh, okay, yeah. you hear BT say Sydney skirmish? Ah, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what's worse. Like, it's got to be. You can't take that as like a positive, right? <laughs> Sharing the same, you know, brainwave as BT. No, <laughs> you can't have that unless he's been listening to the pod. That'd be good. Mm, Shout out, Brian. Cool. Um, love what you're doing with your uh, solar battery bank, off grid living. Do you follow him on fucking Instagram or something? Yeah. Good? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, how did you know? <laughs> He's got yeah, uh solar battery with um backup diesel generator that um runs for five minutes a week as maintenance, but has never kicked on. Never needed it to even with days without power. Solar would Interesting. Be enough. Uh all right, moving on. MCG uh Melbourne Demons, North Melbourne, Kangaroos. 
this actually could be interesting. This might be an upset. Really? <laughs> yeah, as in Matt will probably be upset. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no Petrarca, um, North obviously had a very good start to this week's game, bottled it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I have to be sensible and pick Melbourne, right? Yeah. Be ridiculous. But I certainly won't be showing them in. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to tip north because I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> I'm tipping with the odds, but we'll see. Yeah, Matt's like 15 back on the regular tipping <laughs> ladder. So. He can do whatever he wants at this it's point. It's not good. It doesn't make a difference. He might as well keep I'm... throwing games to try and get last place. Lucky door prize. Well, I'm, I'm technically not last now, but only being ahead by someone's missus who was probably convinced it would be fun and Certainly no longer cares or tips. Yeah, doesn't tip. Uh, that is fact. It's really so unfortunate. I'm, I'm losing to default robo tip. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're losing to uh, the away team default tip. I believe that that's how it operates. It's the um. That's tough for you there. What's his name? Warren Buffett said that if you just bet. The safe bet you just win. I'm, I'm the hedge fund guy who's take. I'm, I'm, I'm in deep. I'm down horrendously. <laughs> I can't NFTs. afford to pay back the <laughs> the one point eight billion dollars of hedge money. <laughs> Warren Buffett's in in you know funeral homes and um, garbage businesses, and Matt's in N- <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> yeah, the safe bet. <laughs> Um, but for the uh, for the punter out there, sp- sprinkle on North Melbourne plus thirty two and a half might be in play. Yeah, unless it was last season. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not in play if it was um, more than two weeks in the past. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, is Holly I'm still Reed... looking at? Sorry, you Sorry. go. No, no, you go. Oh, I was going to say, I'm still looking at words that we can use for the Sydney derby. Okay, keep, oh, nice. keep workshopping that. Uh, I believe Harley Reid would still be out because West Coast had a bye. So yeah, I thought so. Can't serve a max suspension on that. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be the Bombers over West Coast, especially in Melbourne. That's unfortunate. I wish they'd just crash and burn already, but yep. we'll go the Bombers. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> oh man, Suns Freo. The form's pretty brutal. Only 9% of people on Gold Coast. Yeah. Freo didn't apparently. even win this week, but they are back at home, obviously. And the Gold Coast have to travel. They had a bad game against St Kilda. Surely they can't be that bad as well, right? Again. I think they have a chance. I think they can beat Fremantle. Definitely have a bigger chance than the odds would suggest, I would think. But here I am I sitting, sitting with my son's jumper on. <laughs> <laughs> Take that as you will. <laughs> yeah, Gold Coast win this one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Dot com. I'm, t- I'm tipping the Suns. Once again, it didn't want to submit my tips this week. Just like doesn't give me the button to let me submit. Mm. Mine like says I haven't submitted it, but then I hit the thing and, and they're saved. So who knows? Um, I can't see the odds on there, so I have to go to Bookmaker of Choice. Uh, I'm still in last place, so I'll have first pick. Fantastic. <laughs> Dude, I'm in finals now, eh? I'm eighth. Nice. I flew up the fucking leaderboard. Only a three-point gap between me and um top four. <laughs> if I... So, I believe... Can can we see on the app what what game is the most favoured? Because on on sports bet it's looking like uh, the north one. I think it's 
I think it's Eagles Essendon. Okay. Ninety eight percent to two percent. Let me let me Oh, I had odds here before. Yeah. It Matt's got um, Matt's Yeah, West Coast true. West Coast paying five dollars fifty. Yeah. And then on another one they're five forty. Okay. Uh slim pickings for games. Um in that case. As much as I would dislike, I would be happy if I could in the scenario. I don't think I can, but if I could pick um, the Bombers as my shoe of the week, I would be happy to lose it and have to do the shoe hmm. this year to see Essendon lose this game. <laughs> I would sacrifice back to the shoe gods for the Bombers to <laughs> really start crashing and burning. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> but but it's against the rules. But rules so is tough. rules. Rules be rules. Um, so I'm, I mean, I can't imagine the Giants are going to kick that inaccurate. The, the Suns need all the support they can get. I'm on the Suns. Oh, wow. Well, That's fair enough. That's uh, that makes it me then. Last game too. Uh, I'll go Sydney. Nice. Makes sense. Yeah, Sydney. Just keep sure. keep keep picking them until they lose. I suppose it'll happen one day or it won't. You know, true. It might never happen again. It'd be crazy, but they might literally never they lose might a game lose, again. There's a chance that they never lose a game of football ever again. <laughs> it's slim. Non-zero. Non-zero. I don't know what to do. I think the Port Brisbane game is going to be closer than the Carlton Geelong game, but Carlton Geelong is going to be one of those sides winning by 30. I just don't know which one. That's why you always pick the first game by 24. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Uh, You can't shoo in Carlton, surely not. I don't know. They're up in second. There's no lids. They're all gone. Yeah, but... Like, ethically and morally. (laughs) (laughs) He's right. He's right. He's right. Uh, But that doesn't leave many options. Man. You you wouldn't shoo in North. No. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. I wouldn't. (laughs) I, w- I wasn't expecting you to shoo in uh, the Suns, so I, I was really eyeing them up. It's thrown a You have seen what he's wearing, right? Yeah, I know, but I think uh, oh, I think I'll shoo in Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, dude. Yeah. All right. This is interesting because if Geelong win, I won't. <laughs> Not that I love Geelong, but I don't know. It's a bit of a. It's like the joke of burning that big pile of money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful. Just want to Locked in. Chaotic outcome. <laughs> Locked in. Uh, I've got the Suns. Um, Matt has the Blues. Killing us, Sydney. Uh, book it. Let's have a little little look. Will be would be decent odds this week. Yeah, surely. A uh, little three legger, six dollars eighty. Oh, decent value. Me. Worth a sprinkle. Nothing crazy, just fifty or hundred or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Know. Worth it. Worth a sprinkle. Nothing. Nothing too ridiculous. Um, where one from one in our past one, as far as form goes <laughs> on picking chewins of the week, chewing multi. So um, take that as you will. It might not be too late if we're able to backdate the State of Origin game one. We should put like a tracker on old mate and and just see like see how truly horrendous his picks are. Oh, Joel Kane. Yeah, yeah, terrible. 
there was one. Just, Nathan Brown does it for the uh, for the AFL, and there was one point that I saw, and he was like, someone had tracked it on Reddit or Twitter or something like that, and he was yeah, like, I think it was Twitter. Yeah, he was like zero and six or zero and seven or something to start the season. And it's like, oh, crazy! Who would have thought the uh, the sports bet guy on the sports bet ads would give out losers? <laughs> How is that legal? <laughs> Because he says, uh, gamble responsibly at the end. Uh, bet with thy head and not uh, over it. Chances That's are you're about to lose. Sanity. Mm. Think about what you could be buying instead. <laughs> Crack. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who are interested, um, this season, we have only hit the uh, shoe-in of the week multi three times now. <laughs> As a team. Shoes do be showing. Tough look. <laughs> <laughs> but we did hit it in bye week, which, you know, it's tougher to hit it in a bye week. Much trickier. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are experts. Absolutely. Um, oh, and the odds were actually like, from memory, they were all pretty tight last week. Was it the week before? Uh, so, I think most of the choices were a bit iffy, hence why I actually picked Hawks. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's stick with our one from one in the last <laughs> one, um, because in the two bye yeah. weeks before that, we were uh, as a team we only got one. Oh, game that doesn't matter. Don't worry about yeah, it. Don't, don't even that, say it. They don't matter. Shh, shh, shh. Um, one from one in the last one. Um, great Thank value you. on this week's multi. You get it in. Um, all right. Uh, moving on. Um, as I said at the top of the show, we've been avoiding brooms. Uh, NBA Finals, head back to Boston. Uh, Celtics are up 3-1. Um, looking to finish things out at home in a gentleman's sweep, perhaps. Uh, Matty, any thoughts? You've been watching? Yeah. Uh, the previous game was pretty cool, but I think I think it's far more likely that Dallas just went in to have fun and, you know, I, uh, you've seen it a million times before. Like some sometimes you just drop a game because you're going to feel pretty comfortable up 3-0 and I, like it hurts because I don't love what I saw the first three games. It, it was, it wasn't, it didn't ever feel like a close match regardless of what the score might might have looked like. Um, it, it appeared to be pretty obvious that the Celtics were significantly better across the board mm. so i don't know to to be able to like yeah to to have to go back to boston twice assuming they win the next game and then the previous one it's gonna be tough the this one coming up uh i think tomorrow i want to say uh, i think it's a yeah, day it ahead yeah. of the stanley cup game um this almost has to be a must win for boston if if you they think? lose this and then you see what happens in uh, what was it, game three, where they just held on after a big comeback from the Mavs, yeah, um, who closed a huge lead, but then Luca got fouled out. Yeah, if if the Celtics lose this one, you know those doubts of the older, you know, Boston team from one or two seasons ago may creep back in. You could be right, mm. and. And Dallas were Dallas did look good actually. It, I'm, I'm like backflipping now, but like they look good. It, it's it's easy to get sucked in because you're listening to you're you're listening to these high profile millionaire commentators that they put on, and they they say all the generic things like, "Oh, you know, Luke is amazing. He can't do any wrong." That they, they show you the stat of how many points Luca and Kari have together. Obviously, they are very talented, but um, but it's the NBA Finals. It's one of those things. It's always like it's made up. Dallas, Dallas, when they won, when they had an incredible game, it was all the little things like Blake Lively getting huge involvement on rebounds, not quitting on offensive boards. Um, that other dude, I can't remember his name. Is that Ryan but, Reynolds? But you what? know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> you literally said Blake hard. Lively. Hell yeah. That's his name, isn't it? <laughs> It can't be. There's no way. Derek Lively, perhaps? 
Yeah, Derek Lively the second. A Freudian slip, if you will, on Matt's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pretend. I don't know anything about the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretending the whole time. I don't, I don't like their commander in chief. Uh, well, you're not a big fan of Shark Tank. Yeah, he's not even their owner anymore. He's, no, he isn't. No, he sold them. <laughs> See what he oh, knows he, about the Dallas Mavericks. He's just hanging out now. Oh, weird. He's just, he's just a super fan now. Well, he's it, he, probably a it, member of the board or some cringe. Yeah. It is pretty cool to see uh, Dirk Nowitzki there having like the time of his life when they were finally winning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could have found the name of the other guy because it's not fair to not say who he is. He's one of those black guys that has like white people eyes and it's kind of scary. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> He's got like green eyes or something. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought that's problematic, at... I think. <laughs> Daniel Gafford. <laughs> Let me have a look. Let me have a look at this gentleman. Daniel Gafford. But he, but he's like, he's been huge for them, like making all those little gritty plays and whatnot. <laughs> you, yeah, you, his his um ten minutes played on the fifteenth yeah, yeah. of June for seven points, four rebounds and one block were probably huge. Yeah. No, dude. See, that's what I'm saying. That's like, that, it was a really good seven points. Yeah, don't let the paper get. Like what? What's zero the, assists? You you gotta know the story behind the numbers. P- papers played on the spreadsheet, but the games in the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keelan, when you Google a picture of uh, Daniel Gafford, um, what color eyes does he have? Oh fuck knows, dude. Um, do you want me to... <laughs> it's not big enough on my screen. <sighs> Let me let me find a bigger image because I opened I, you know how Google Images went to shit like a decade. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get all the it opened ones. like the NBA page, and then it was a tiny little thumbnail. Yeah, I'm like, oh, sick, dude. He's got brown eyes. He's got brown eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them white people brown eyes. <laughs> yeah, well said. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> How does that get to it? <laughs> Man, it's a, it's a, you know, I understand the statement could be misconstrued, but it's something that Isaac and myself both believe wholeheartedly together that we both said. <laughs> you only like the way he performed because he, he, there's a screenshot of him here having a big dunk. That's not even, never mind, that's not even finals. I take it all back. Um, yeah, Derek Lively, <laughs> <laughs> the second. No, it's been cool. It's um, basically uh, like in game two, for example, Kyrie Irving just couldn't get on the board and couldn't get involved in any way whatsoever. That obviously hurts a team that has put all their eggs into two baskets. And game three was kind of close, but pretty similar thing where. The Celtics bench consistently, like Derek White and Drew Holiday, have been performing in like out of their minds every single game, and um, none till Game Four did like the combined Dallas bench have say more than ten points. Uh, like they just weren't doing anything for anyone. Um, so you know, it, there's a lot of big ifs, but uh, yeah, Isaac made a pretty good point. I think. I mean, even Tatum Tatum looked really sad and not as confident as he had the previous three games. Mm. He do and be like, getting sad. Yeah, he seems like an emotional player. Like the sadder he gets, he starts like flailing more, playing worse, getting even like more in his own head. And um, and again, like despite what people say about Tatum, like oh, he's not as good as he thinks. Like he is. He's an insanely talented player. But if he gets in his own head, um. That's like a huge chink in their armor. Do you reckon he's he might be slightly upset that he's not going to win finals MVP? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's probably going to be Drew Holiday. <laughs> At this rate, probably. 
Giannis crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's finding out what Portland was trying to tell everyone the last 10 years. I'm a certified Lillard hater. <laughs> Now, I did, oh, I'd, thir, thir, 30 point Lillard no. off 50, 10, 52 shot attempts. Wow. Wait. <laughs> that, that's great. <laughs> I, I did see someone um, on Reddit, I think it was, um, had, it, it was probably like $400, $500 total stake across two multis, you know, 300 bucks <laughs> and a couple hundred or whatever the other way around. Um and it was all player point unders in game four. <laughs> Just all of them. And he, and he hit all of them uh, across the two multis and he turned his 400, 500 bucks into $70,000. Yeah, and you just like, know this guy, the first thing he went and bought was an upgraded armchair for the corner of his bedroom. <laughs> At some stage in life, like it doesn't matter how much you're going to gain from it. You just got to grow the fuck up. He went and bought a lazy boy <laughs> as his cup yeah. chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big old chastity cage for the fucking... <laughs> he went and got a brand new shiny gold, smallest size chastity cage and a, and a lazy boy with, with platinum seat. <laughs> platinum with, with diamonds on it. <laughs> Oh my god! And a brand new camcorder as well, <laughs> tripod. He's not allowed to watch it though. <laughs> you know his favorite sex position is this one. <laughs> Jump over to the YouTube for that. <laughs> I, saw, I think I saw that exact meme earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, there's no words for that, man. Imagine betting five hundred dollars on on NBA players to not do their job. Like in no, in the... you're betting five hundred dollars on the defensive players to do their job. Yeah. That's the spin. It, if you could bet on it in the corporate world, it would make <laughs> sense, right? To bet on people being under target productivity. That's a sure bet every day. That that's shoe in, that, shoe in of the week every week. In the NBA world, that that's not what you want to take. No. And and you will that's get called insane. out for it every time by us. Facts. Yeah. You shouldn't even that's... be allowed to place that volume. I think. Of so, yeah. The the betting company of choice here really should have a little pop up. You know? Are you sure? <laughs> you know, hit you with like a you know bet with your head not over mm-hmm. or whatever. You press yes, another pop up number for like beyond blue, <laughs> <laughs> and then random customer survey. Are you in a, into any of the following pastimes? Uh, cuck holding, <laughs> pegging. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you got to make that multiple choice. Then, yeah, don't you? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Terrible, terrible time. Now, uh, onto the Stanley Cup in a similar position, um, as I spoiled before. Um, oh, sorry, this one? Yep. <laughs> in, a, in a similar position. Uh, it's now three. Florida's up 3 1. Edmonton won game four at home. Uh, they won it in 8 1 fashion. Um, so, pretty good. Uh, Connor McDavid now has the all time assist record for assists in a single postseason. Um, with, I want to say it's 32, bear with me, 32 assists, uh, a lot. overtakes uh, the, the great one, Wayne Gretzky. Um, pretty good, uh, I don't know, For this is going pear-shaped perhaps, I don't know. Um, I have the Panthers starting goalie as uh, a pick for player of the playoffs and... Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I also have McDavid for that, which you know help, helps that. Um, but mm-hmm. I also have Oilers to to win the whole the cup. So if they could uh, be one of two teams ever to complete the reverse sweep, that would be, be that would be great. Yeah. Um, and if McDavid could just you know keep being him, uh, that would be even better. But I do have a little uh, 
a little bit of trivia here from the NHL Oz Instagram page. Um, how much uh, can the Stanley Cup hold? Now, in volume, boys, uh, how, how, how in liters, how big do you yep. think the Stanley Cup is? How big is the cup? Mm. How big is Stan's cup, volume-wise? I'm going to go with uh, maybe like 64. 64. Oh. 30. <laughs> what? 34 what? 30 liters. Jesus Christ. Oh, did we? Did I severely <laughs> overshoot this with 60? <laughs> uh, by about tenfold, yeah. So, ah, so the cup itself is just like the top bit. It's 6.18 oh. litres. Which is oh, just, oh, which, that's so disappointing. Which is a large cup, right? Nah, fuck off. But it does, I thought it, the cup was like real deep. I mean, it's big, but it's not a volcano. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's a bowl on top of on top of the stacks. <laughs> that's I disappointing. It, I thought it'd be known as the iceberg cup. I thought more, most of the cup was underneath <laughs> the cup itself. It's hidden under the cup. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> now it they've. Uh, Translated it into, you know, Australian metrics um, because we're, you know, we're not just reliant on leaders here, mm. of course. Um, how many tins of Milo do you reckon the Stanley Cup holds? Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that including the tin? Depends on size tin Milo you buy. Um, I'm I'm going to assume the big one. If you're not buying the big like one, 1. 2, Are they like 1.2 kilos? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Probably about fucking six of them then. Matty? Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. What what tin size are we going on? I, I, I don't know. It doesn't say, right? You, you're going to make this I'll tell you right now, excuse the, for the three of the four six things. Pint, ten pints. 24 tins. <laughs> it holds 12 <laughs> tins of Milo. No. Oh, okay. Uh, and 10 pints. Jars of Vegemite. How many do you oh, reckon? Fuck off. Twenty. This is, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to <laughs> to Australia. What are you talking about? All we do is, you know, ride kangaroos to school and eat Vegemite Milo. I haven't bought either of those two products in. I mean, Vegemite lasts about four years in the cupboard. So yeah. I can't. I can't remember the last time I bought a kangaroo pass. <laughs> yeah, my kangaroo's been in the shop for a while. <laughs> so, uh, jars of Vegemite. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Eleven, allegedly. No, what? How is it off. less than Milo? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense at all, dude. They must be using tiny Milo ones. Yeah, I guess so. Also, Milo's less dense. I reckon you could pack it in there too. Yeah, that's why you get. 12. I reckon they're not actually. Then I don't reckon anyone's ever actually poured X amount of Milo tins into the Stanley Cup to really test. There's this. only one Australian that's ever won the Stanley Cup, so probably not. This is bullshit, then. Yeah. Um. Now, a, a classic drink. How many cans of Passiona do you think fit in the Stanley Cup? Uh, uh, probably about uh, eighteen. Yeah, it'd have to be right. Pretty close. Good, good math, and boys. Uh, Sixteen and a half. Oh, no, nice. that's not too bad. Pretty good. It's the closest one. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and this one's more up Matt's alley. Uh, how many packets of Tim Tams do you reckon fit in the Stanley Cup? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how bad they... if I nail this? <laughs> <laughs> how are they doing the metric on that though? Because, like, are they? Have they actually calculated the volume of a Tim Tam? I guess so. And then... I don't know. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, 43. 43 packets. Oh, certainly, <laughs> certainly four of them. <laughs> That's a lot of Tim Tams. Talking about how many fit in a Stanley Cup, not how many fit in your belly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wonder how many Tim Tams you could eat before it just became revolting. Before you become like three. Be like, Tim Tam? Literally three. It's that like three packets? No, three Tim Tams, dude. It's, it's that oh, oh it's yeah. that ship philosophy. How many Tim Tams can you eat before you become Tim Tam? <laughs> <laughs> Depends. Is your name or if your name's already Tim, you're halfway there. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Keelan Packett. I don't care. <laughs> 20? Uh, nine, apparently. No. There's no fucking They money, might dude. be talking about the big dog three row. Oh, the American ones. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. The family pack that Matt eats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have tried to eat one and I think I did, but it was unpleasant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure it was. <laughs> That's so many Tim Tams, dude. <laughs> you never enjoy the last six. <laughs> last six. <laughs> How many Tim Tams are we saying in one of these big ones? There, there's got to be eighteen in a in a big pack in the in the three row oh. pack. There's got to be like thirty, right? Dude, they're only six dollars on Amazon. Oh, Hell yeah, Jeff. 365 gram pack of Tim Tams, which is 20 biscuits. That is 2,000 calories. Fuck yeah. If you eat the whole packet. It's all right. We, <laughs> we you know, we're big dude, boys. We've about, got some left over for other stuff in the day. Talk about price gouging, dude. Amazon has 20 Tim Tams for six bucks, whereas Woolworths mm-hmm. has them on sale for... Uh, uh, 11 biscuits for $4 on sale, normally $5. Did you say it was 200, 2,000 calories? Yeah, I'm going off and I'm rounding the 95 up, 95 calories a biscuit up to 100. What's he, what's he calculating, I wonder? No, I'm Matt, you can curious. eat one 365 gram packet a day without putting on anything. In fact, you'd a, probably a lose weight. Your stature would probably lose weight. Tim Tam diet. <laughs> you fad. Wait, it, is it 2,000 kilojoules or calories? Calories. I don't use kilojoules because that makes your number too big. Oh. And it means that the head math is, becomes a lot more difficult. How do you like on the Woolies website? It says the packet's 2,000 kilojoules. No, it doesn't. I'm looking at it. 360. No. What do you mean? Please read nutrition labels. Oh, per 100. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I'm so fat. Yeah, so see how it says packets. per 100 grams is uh, 2,190 kilojoules, but you got to double that. So that gets you to about 4,400 um, kilojoules, and then you divide that by 4.2 to get calories. So it puts you at about a thousand and change. Oh man. So, so as Isaac was asking before though, a, a 365 gram packet of Tim Tams. It's 20 Tim Tams. Per hundred grams has 2160 or like 2160 kilojoules. Uh, whereas one of those, Big six dollar family blocks of chocolate has two thousand two hundred and fifty kilojoules. Hmm. Per so it's, even, it's even denser. Yeah. Not by much. That's change. That's really not much difference. I, I I've per hundred grams. I, you got to consider. You got to consider that too. the chocolate the chocolate weighs so much more. Yeah. Than Tim yeah, Tams. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What's no, heavier but, though, 100 grams of Tim Tams or 100 grams of chocolate? Well, Tim Tams have the wafer in it, which is quite light. <laughs> 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 no, the um. What's heavier, a kilogram of feathers <laughs> or a kilogram of <laughs> so of lead? <laughs> uh, yeah. God damn. All right. All right, we're done. Uh, flip, flip a coin. No, nah, I just, I just, I've got football, oh, football in it. In it. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, so the Euros are happening. Mention... Pretty much everything yeah. you expected to happen happened. Yes, absolutely. There you <laughs> go. Albania, I, I... <laughs> looking at you. <laughs> Albania lost. Oh, but two one. They scored in the first minute against Italy because they hadn't had their espresso yet. <laughs> A lot happened in the first 16 minutes of that game and then not much else happened. If you're only looking at the goal tally. But yes, uh, I'm ready for someone to flip a coin. That's all I had. Okay, excellent. Oh. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, okay, it is... Matt, whose flip is it? 
Uh, it was yours last time, so maybe it's Keelan's. It is Keelan's. Uh, Keelan, temperature. Top of 21 today. 21. Right now it's 12. Can I get a stat on how many correct flips we've gotten when the current temperature was the reverse of the maximum temperature for the day, please? <laughs> um, unfortunately, we don't have the data of current temperature at time yep. of flip. Um, but something <sighs> that might interest you is it's been 21 for the past four flips. Interesting. And what have those four flips been? Those four flips have been uh, three tails and one head. Interesting. <sighs> All right. Who's streaming the flip? Uh, I can do I'm it. I'm to see what the coin looks like. Oh, I'm going to see what the coin looks like today just to make sure it's looking good. All right. Give me one second. Before I make my choice. Show me this over. Flip sim you. Uh, just check. I don't have any, um, you know, expose style ads. <laughs> I'd be really interested to see what kind of ads you're getting today. If that's okay. Let me just screen share it so it doesn't look weird. There we go. All right, there we go. One good one standing by. Uh, can you see the ad or no? <laughs> The compost bin. Here's a compost compost bin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. All right. Well man self reports as living regional. <laughs> uh okay. Uh, Green flip. I mean the whole website's looking awfully heads, so I'm gonna go with heads. Big head guy picks heads. Come on, big money. Heads it is. Yes. It was Joe. Do we still have the this all the MLG horn on this on this thing. Oh fuck! <laughs> no, no, <laughs> so please, don't be too loud. We don't have it. Oh the fucking hell! That's so loud. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I hope everyone's not just getting off the highway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did in a hurry just then. <laughs> yeah. Well, <They> crashed. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We should do a three minute outro with just real ambulance sirens. <laughs> They just slowly gain and then decrease in volume. Or we could just like really annoy people oh, with fuck. one of these. <laughs> no, don't. Imagine if your voice sounded like that. Oh, well, you wouldn't know because it'd be your voice, I guess. Mm. There'd be a lot of this guy. Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, Keelan, back to 500. He's made it all the way back, 18 and 18. Oh, um, how good. So we are now all above 500. Matt's also 18 and 18. Um, 59 and 49 as a team. 54.63%. Nice. It's not too bad. Mm. It's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. All right. I'll have it. Thank you, boys. See you next week. No. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Cheerio. It's going off.